Good morning. We're going to do a Bible study together this morning. I thought a good place to start would be Psalm 1. So uh, let me share my screen with you and we'll get started here. There we go. Um, first thing we do is to come to our Bible Gateway program. Remember this? We are in the New International Version. We typed in Psalm 1. Now we just cut and paste into our web browser. And there, there we are. Now the first thing that we do, of course, is to read. So uh, back in uh, Bible Gateway, blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked. They're like the chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to, to destruction. I want to encourage you to read a passage before you uh, study it five or six times, and it's always helpful to read it in a different translation. So we're going to want we're going to read this in um, the New Living Translation. Oh, the joys of those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or stand around with sinners or join in with mockers. But they delight in the law of the Lord, meditating on it day and night. They're like trees planted along the riverbank, bearing fruit each season. Their leaves never wither. They prosper in all they do. But not the wicked. They're like worthless chaff scattered by the wind. They'll be condemned at the time of judgment. Sinners have no place among the, among the godly. For the Lord watches over the path of the godly, but the path of the wicked leads to destruction. Back in our word editor, the first thing that we begin to do is to look for repetitions. As you look through this passage, some of the repetitions that might stand out to you, you have law of the Lord. We'll just underline that. His law. We'll underline that. What else do you see here? You have wicked here and wicked here. There may be a few others, <clears throat> but I do want to point out a repetition that occurs up here at the very start of the passage. Walk in step with the wicked. Stand in the way, let's pull that out a little bit farther, that sinners take. And then finally, we have sit in the company of mockers. And we'll just do that. Now, if you look at those three lines, you will see a repetition of the pattern of sentence that's used. Walk in the step with the wicked. Stand in the way 
that sinners take sit in the company of mockers. You have a repetition here of wicked again, as we saw below, but they're also called mockers and sinners. This is called parallelism, and it's a sign of Hebrew poetry. Similar sentences repeat particular patterns. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers. There's a repetition between those three lines. The other thing that we notice here is there's a definite progression. Walk, stand, and sit. Walk implies just kind of moving by. Stand, you're a little bit more permanent, but when you sit, you are, in essence, identifying with. Now, after repetitions, we look for comparisons and contrasts indicating words for comparison and contrast would include things like this the word but um let me see if i can highlight this well i'm not going to be able to highlight it i guess so we'll just We'll just make that whole text a little bit different color. Let's make it, oh boy. Huh. There we go. Let's make it green. So contrasts are going to be green. We see one contrast here another indicating word for contrast down there. We also see comparisons, like, we're gonna make that blue. So there is like there and like there. And then finally, we see words for cause and effect. Therefore, and later, the word for. We'll get to these relationships uh, a little bit later, we see but again. Um, so, back up here, we'll notice also their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law. More parallelism. Okay, so we have a contrast here between the one who is blessed, excuse me, between the one who walks in step with the wicked, stands in the way that sinners take, or sits in the company of mockers, and the one whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. So let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna mention that down here. The contrast is between the one who identifies with the wicked and the one who meditates on God's word. The other contrast that we have is here. Uh, not so the wicked. That's a contrast between verse three and verse four. What is being contrasted are actually the two comparisons person like a tree They are like a tree planted by a river, and that's contrasted with the person who is like chaff 
that the wind blows away. The other way of saying this is this the person identified in verse 2, and this is the person identified in verse 1. Okay? Now we notice the comparisons as well. There is a comparison between the wicked and chaff. Excuse me, the first comparison is actually different. That's the comparison between um, uh, the person who's, who, who, delights and meditates on God's word. And a tree planted by a river. The wicked then are compared to chaff. And then finally, we have uh, some cause and effects. Uh, the first word, therefore, means that all of this up here is the cause, and this is the effect. So the cause is the wicked are like chaff that the wind blows away. And the effect is they will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. That's followed by an effect and a cause. The word for indicates the effect is up here and the cause is down here. So the effect is that the wicked won't stand in the judgment and the reason why that's true is the Lord watches over the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Okay, so there are our observations. We can also go back and ask the questions who, what, when, where, why, and how. But in this case, this being logical material teaching, we get more uh, mileage out of observing these five relationships, repetitions, contrasts, comparisons, cause effects, and effects cause. The next thing we do is ask questions based on the observations that we've made. So let's look up here at the observation of comparison. How is the person who meditates on God's word like a tree planted by water. And the next question should then be, how is the person who is wicked like chaff? Now, before we go on and answer, asks other questions, 
Let's just look for answers to this. How's the person who meditates on God's word like a tree planted by water? I'm going to draw from personal experience and actually from high school biology at this point. A tree receives water from two sources. And it receives its nutrition from one source and one source alone. That's the ground around it. But a tree can absorb water through its leaves. Uh, let's see here. Let's do this. A tree can absorb water through its leaves or through its roots. In Israel, uh, land where uh, rain is not very plenteous. In fact, they have an early rain and a la latter rain. Um, that's because there's only two periods throughout the year in which it does rain, and that's very little. A tree that stands in the middle of nowhere, the only source that it has for its, for its uh, water is through the leaves. But a tree planted by a river absorbs water through its roots. One of the byproducts of that is that a tree that receives water through its leaves does not have a large root system. It gets roots, it gets nutrition through its roots, but it relies on the leaves to get uh, water. A tree planted by a river, on the other hand, can receive both nutrition and water through its roots. And as a result, the roots grow deep in that tree. You, you uh, see something like this in California redwoods. California redwoods are so tall that uh, they cannot suck water up from the roots to the leaves uh, on, the, uh, on the upper part of the tree. It's just too high for it. So they rely almost exclusively on rainfall uh, to receive water for the upper part of the tree. As a result, the root system of California red, redwoods is extremely small. And what's happening to the redwood forest is that they literally lean up against each other. The redwoods at the end of the forest tend to fall over because the roots can't keep the tree upright. A person who meditates on God's word is like a tree planted by water because uh, Because that, that person uh, who does meditate on God's word receives roots for his or her life. Uh, they are firmly rooted. Now it's interesting. Exactly the opposite is true of the wicked. They're like chaff. Uh, Chaff is the dead husk around certain grains, like grains of wheat. Drawing on now from personal experience, I'm old enough that I can remember my grandmother, who was much older than me. I was, I was uh, born to one of her last children uh, when she was 35 years old. So. Uh, Grandma, when I was growing up, was already in her 70s, so uh, she's uh, quite older than me. Uh, she lived on a farm, and when she would make bread, what she would do when, um, when wheat was in season is she would go to the field behind her farmhouse, and uh, she would grab ears of wheat, and she'd bring them into the kitchen. Now in the kitchen, she would take those ears of wheat and she would rub it like that between her hands, uh, letting the grain and the chaff fall on her apron that was spread out on a table 
in front of her. Then she would walk outside, take the ends of the apron, take the corners, and she would begin to pull those corners, make the grain and the chaff jump. With any little bit of wind, the chaff floats away and the heavier grain falls right back down on the apron. Then she took that wheat inside the house, ground it into flour, and made some of the best bread that you have ever tasted in your life. Chaff is caught by the wind and just floats away. Uh, the wicked have no roots. And so they are caught by any wind that comes their way. They, because they have no root, they walk in step with the wicked and the wicked influence them. They stand in the way that sinners take and the sinners influence them. And then finally, they actually sit in the company of mockers who sits in the company of mockers? Mockers do. So this is a gradual identification with sin. As a result, cause and effect, they will not be able to stand in the judgment. They have no roots. But the righteous, first of all, delight in the law of the Lord. They meditate on God's law day and night. So when the time for judgment comes, the righteous can stand. Their leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous. How? Because they delight in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord influences them. The way of the wicked leads to disruption, destruction because they have no roots. Our application today, meditate on God's word, read God's word, study God's word. It provides roots, firm roots, that keep you grounded, that keep you prosperous. That's our study for today. Um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you see how you can use some of these principles and begin to discover things on your own. God bless you. We will come back and do this again.